Hey everybody, I guess we're live now. Um, I am Mark Wallace. We're going to be doing some photo and portfolio reviews today. We're going to spend about an hour, a little bit more than that. And uh, if you are watching us on YouTube and you want to chat, make sure you zip over to snapfactory.com slash live. That is where the chat window is and you can ask questions. And today, because it's the day before Thanksgiving, I am flying solo. It's just me and Matt Madrid back there switching everything. And so we don't have a chat host. I have this computer off screen and I can see people saying hello, everyone. And there's a big hello. There's Grant Gilmore and there's a bunch of people in there chatting right now. So if you want to dive in and chat with us, chat with each other, make sure you zip over to snapfactory.com slash live. And there is the chat window there. All right, we are going to, um, we meaning me and you, the viewers, we're going to dive right in and we want to talk about some of the uh, photos and the portfolios that were submitted today. And for those of you who don't know how to submit your photos for review, don't do that in the chat window. The best way to do that is on my Facebook page. And so I want to show you really quickly uh, the where you can find all the different people that we have uh, selected from. So Matt, let's show the Facebook page here. So yesterday I posted a, a little post that said we're going to be doing a live portfolio review and uh, all kinds of people posted uh, photos and portfolios for review and that's really where we want those to be posted. And the reason for that is that way everybody that uh, is going to be watching this later in different areas of the world can go and look and click and see all of those things and also it allows people to see your work and then you can also reply to people and give them feedback on what you think about their photos or portfolios so if you want to uh, help me by giving your feedback to people's portfolios or their photos well then just join me on facebook and let's make that a place where we can discuss great photography Okay, so what I want to do is dive right in. I have selected a bunch of different photos for review today, and we are going to start with this one right here. This one is from, uh, I think his name is Rogan Templer, and uh, this one is, he just said, hey, give this photo a look if you have time. Rogan, we're going to do that. And this, I don't know where this was shot. It looks uh, somewhere in North America, but I don't know, maybe Canada, um, but I love it. And the reason I love this photo, A, I, I love the exposure. So just technically, it's got a great exposure. You can see detail in the sky. You can see the blue there. We have a little bit of some washed out detail here, but um, that's, it looks natural. I'm going to make this full screen, actually. And then uh, we also have some color in the sky. So this is shot at a great time of day where the sun wasn't way up in the sky. If the sun was way up in the sky, then what would happen is we would sort of lose all of those details. And so... Um, this was a great choice for that. And we also have a really slow shutter speed. And what that slow shutter speed is going to do is it's going to take this water here. You know, it looks sort of like a watercolor painting. That's because the shutter was open long enough that it just sort of smoothed out that sea. Um, this reminds me a lot of some of David Nightingale's work, actually. Um, I just really, really like it. And so it's got uh, a nice composition where we have sort of the rule of thirds here. So even though this dock is gone, we still have these converging lines that lead us into the photo. Um, it's very, uh, it, it's not totally monochromatic, but it has a lot of, of cool colors, lots of uh, teal and blue and blue. And so that lends itself to this sort of peaceful feeling. The other thing that I think is nice about this, it's a horizontal shot. And so horizontal and blue equal nice, calm, peaceful, tranquil feelings. And so I think you pulled this off really well. The thing that I wish that we had a little bit more of is uh, more detail. Uh, so this could be sharpened a little bit. And I think that's the problem with um, uh, Facebook. So we're losing a lot of detail in the Facebook compression, specifically in these logs here and in the shadow detail. We don't see a lot of detail in these logs. So uh, perhaps in the original file you have that. But here in Facebook, we're not seeing uh, the detail that I'd like to see. And it's not as sharp as I'd like to see in a, a final print. But again, I'm confident that that is a problem with Facebook and not the photo itself. So great start, Rogan. I think that's a, a fantastic picture. Um, you should be proud of this one. This is really, really well done. Okay, so um, somebody asked if there was an ND filter that was used on this photo. I don't know if that's the case, but uh, all you have to do is zip over to Rogan's um, website page, and you can ask that question um, to do that. Now, a lot of people uh, will try to use an ND filter on a photo like this, and um, I don't think that an ND filter was used on this necessarily, uh, an ND filter being a neutral density, density filter, because the sun is not way up here in the sky. It's, it's behind the mountains here. You can see where, this is where the, the light is streaming behind this mountain, but in, in front of this. And so I don't know that an, a neutral density filter would be needed at this time of day, but you'd have to ask Rogan if he did that. Rogan is in the chat. Oh, Rogan is in the chat. So uh, Matt's yelling at me that Rogan is in the chat. 
And uh, Rogan, did you use? He, said, yeah, I he did use an ND filter. All right, you can't hear Matt. Matt, we'll have to get a microphone so you can hear him. But he said, yeah, he did use a neutral density filter. But my um, suggestion is, if you want to know more about this photo, just zip over, make friends with Rogan, and ask him about it. But man, I, I really like it. It's uh, it's really cool. Okay, we're gonna move on. Well done, Rogan. I, I I'm glad that we got a launch with a great shot. This one here is. Um, uh, Karina Paulson, it was shot by, I think you pronounce this Joao. I have a friend that's named Joao and that's how you spell it. So I'm going to go with Joao, but I'm not sure that's how you say it, but I'm going to say, yeah, uh, that's Joao. Um, so this photo is, um, I, I like the styling. I like the, you know, obviously there's heavy makeup and styling with the hair being in the flowers and, and, you know, I'm not so sure what, what you were doing with this photo. Um, it's obviously a sensual photo. It's supposed to invoke a lot of sexiness. So we have this girl that's sort of on her back being all happy. Um, the thing that I, I also like about it is the really shallow depth of field. And so I think that's all well and done. I think that the uh, tones, I'm not so sure about the tones because it's a little bit too green for me. And so that makes her skin look a little bit jaundice. And so, you know, I, I don't like a, I don't know if she's uh, excited or if she's sort of dying out of uh, kidney failure, but um, so the color to me is, is a little bit off, um, but I do like the composition and I like the fact that even though she's lying on the ground, it's at an angle, and so you've done a good job with that. Um, and the bokeh is, is really, really nice. So uh, the question for me to you, Joao, is, you know, what are you trying to evoke here? Is it uh, just a, a portrait? Um, is it something that's personal work? You know, you, you're gonna have to decide for yourself if you accomplish the goal. I can't really say that. Um, but this is not a photo that I think I would um, aspire to take myself in this way because I don't really know what it's trying to say other than this girl is um, having a good time, I guess. So if that's what you wanted to go for, then that, that's great. Um, but I would love to see a little bit more out of the set to see some of the different angles to see. It looks like there was quite a bit done with the hair and the hair is chopped off in this photo. And so, uh, you know, if there's more that we could see with the styling, that would be great. Uh, and the model is phenomenal. I don't think anybody's going to argue that. Um, but, you know, that's, that's just the way it is. Somebody else in the, in the comments said that they weren't crazy about this twig in front of her left eye. And I totally agree with that. So um, that was halal. I don't know how you say that. But uh, that's, that's uh, my opinion. I think this is a good start, but it needs a little bit more because I'm not so sure what it says other than that this girl is really attractive. Okay. So let's move on. We have a lot of photos to cover today. We want to make sure that we get to all of them. This is something that uh, we get rarely, and that is food photography, food or product photography. So this was shot, and I'm not even going to... So this, I'm guessing, says product and photographing. Not so sure. Um, evidently, our neighbors have their motorbikes out today. I don't know if you can hear that. So let's look at this. So what, what we want to do with a uh, food photo, and Rick Gale, by the way, uh, is a local food photography photographer here in Phoenix, Arizona. And he is one of, I think, the best in the world and phenomenal. I did an uh, interview with him on how they do that for Adorama TV. And so if you get a chance, you might want to look that up. It's on how they do that. It's on YouTube. And Rick Gale is the guy's name. And he talks a little bit about how he does food uh, photography. And also um, Krim Krejci, who talks about how she does food styling. But anyway, let's talk about this picture. Uh, this photo here, I think, is well done. So we have these, um, they look like chocolatey health biscuits. I'm not sure what they are, but they look really delicious. But look at the composition here. We have um, nice, strong, soft backlight. And so I know Rick talks about this as the circle of beauty of, of backlighting your photo uh, for food fo uh, photography. And we know that it's backlit because we can see the shadows in front of this plate. And we got nice fill light. We have really nice shallow depth of field. I love that. But I love the styling here. So the, the, the uh, texture of the table matches the texture of these cookies. We have, it uh, looks like a little cinnamon stick on there. We've got some nuts and some, some other things. It's got this nice string that's tying everything together. So it's very well presented. The other thing we have, we have some context. So we have these, uh, this bowl in the background here. We have some hot chocolate or hot coffee. I'm guessing it's chocolate because that's what I want it to be. We've got the steam coming off of that. And so it really warms everything up emotionally. 
and I just think this is well done. It's done um, technically very well. It tells the story very well. Um, it follows our rules of composition. We've got the rule of thirds definitely uh, in play here. We've got shallow depth of field in play here. We've got nice sharp uh, sharpness to the image so we can see the details in the cookies. And I think overall this is just done well. Um, the only thing that I would suggest, and I'm not a food photographer, but I'd love to see the horizontal version of this because uh, we've got these crackers chopped off and this plate chopped off. I'm assuming this was done vertically uh, with a lot of uh, empty space here so that there could be some text placed in an ad and that would be a single page ad in a magazine. So that makes sense to me. So I think this is uh, done very well. Um, and I, I really want to dive in and see some more of Rune's work, but we don't have time. But this is a, an example of product photography done very, very well. The other thing that I think that is worth noting here is the lens selection. And so this was done with a longer lens. And how do I know it was done with a longer lens? Well, look at the compression that we have and the angle of view of the lens. We don't see a lot of the room. It looks like uh, everything that's outside of this frame has been illuminated by really compressing things. It's brought the bowl and the cup and the crackers all together. And also a longer lens is gonna lend itself to that shallow depth of field. So this is just a well done port, uh, food portrait. So good job. All right, I'm looking here. Um, the uh, cropping, some people are saying that they would also improve that. That was from uh, Darshan. That looks from India. I'll be in India in two and a half weeks. It's going to be great. And then other people thought maybe the cropping could improve. And then uh, who said they were hungry? Uh, so North Carolina photographer. I'm hungry too. I want some of these crackers. All right. So don't forget, if you're watching and you're uh, on YouTube and or, uh, um, snapfactory.com slash live, you're in the chat window, feel free to ask me some questions. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I would be happy to answer those. I see these off screen here. And so, um, yeah, somebody asked, am I only doing photos that have been posted to Facebook? Yes. So if you want to see your photo reviewed, you need to post that on Facebook. And I talked about why a little bit earlier today or early in the session. And that's because we want everybody to be able to see those and then also comment. We're trying to build a community of, of, uh, people looking at this. By the way, I forgot something that's very important, and that is we are able to do this because this episode is brought to us by Squarespace. And so if you're looking for a uh, website or a portfolio and uh, you haven't found one yet, and uh, you know, this maybe it's too difficult, you don't have any help, you don't have a domain name, and you're trying to figure out how to do that, well, Squarespace is the place that can do that for you. In fact, let's show you this really fast clip right now. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use offer code SNAPFACTORY. Okay, squarespace.com, and there's 10% uh, off your first purchase. Just use that offer code SNAPFACTORY. And um, it's really important. The, the way that we're able to do these shows is... Uh, through our partners and, and Squarespace has made it possible to do uh, today's show and the last one we did and we had a couple more coming. So uh, if you're on the fence of looking at how to build your own portfolio, then go to Squarespace. That's the place to be. Uh, and make sure you use that offer code SNAPFACTORY because if you don't, then they won't know that you heard about them from us and that doesn't help us make future episodes. I'm going to show you how to do some stuff in Squarespace a little bit later on, but I want to keep going on these um, on these uh, photos really fast. So this is Rodrigo Bejas photo. And this I think is also well done. And so this was, I don't know where it was done, but it looks Rocky Mountains, I hope maybe. Um, but the thing that I think that is done well, like the other one that we saw earlier today, is that this is uh, taken at the right time. So the sun is in the right position and the weather is in the right place. So this these clouds, this fog that has sort of rolled in, really separates the, uh, the plains here, um, or the front range of these mountains here from the actual mountains in the background. And I love how we have layers here. We have the blues, this, this horizontal layer. We have the rugged mountains in this layer here with the snow. Then we have the fog in that layer. Then we have this gold here. And so the blue and the gold, I think, really play off each other well. And this is just a great shot. Um, and I don't know what lens was used here and it looks though to me like it's a longer lens and again the reason i say that is because we don't have a lot of distortion in the sky we don't have the sky sort of getting weird in the corners 
Um, but I don't know. It could have been a larger format camera and it could have been a wider angle lens, but I, I have no idea. The other thing I think is well done with this photo, um, not only is it taken at the right uh, season where we have the clouds uh, helping us, it was taken at the right time of day, so we have strong side light, and strong side light creates contrast, and contrast creates form. And so form is what we want in a photo like this. So we, all these crags and all these uh, different valleys and things here, the, the mountains, the way that looks three-dimensional is through that side light. And so if you try to take this exact same photo at a different time of day, what will happen is it will look flat and you won't get that really rugged look. It's just gonna look sort of bleh. And so the key here is make sure you choose not only the right season, but the right time of day. And those things combined are gonna give you a strong photo like this one. Okay, Ruben is leaving us in from the chat room. We'll see you a little bit later. Um, so we will talk about it, Thomas. I think your photo is coming up. Let me look here really fast. Um, so I'm just reading through here to see if there's anything else. Um, all right, so people are just chatting about DJing and all kinds of stuff here, so we'll keep going. Remember, if you have a question and you're watching on YouTube, you need to be watching on uh, our uh, Snap Factory page, snapfactory.com slash live, and that will allow you to open up the chat window, and then I can see what you're chatting with, and so we have this here. So this here is a uh, portrait and it is a portrait from a person named Phoebe. And I'd love to know what people think about Phoebe here uh, because I have some opinions about Phoebe and this portrait. And so, uh, so yeah, so people in the, uh, are, are saying different things about this. So I want you to, to look at this just for a second. And then uh, if you have in the chat room, if you have some opinions, tell me what they are. And then what I will do is I will contrast what you think with what I think because I think this is, uh, well, I don't want to say. I don't want to say my opinion yet on this portrait. I want this to be a little bit interactive. Okay, so um, Bev is just taking it all in. We've got some uh, somebody that says the colors are blending well. Um, yeah, and there's a little bit of a delay between what I say and what you can respond to. I think it's there's still about a minute and a half. Is that right, Matt? I think so. Um, so we have that. Now, the reason I want to hold off on reviewing this photo is because this is part of this website. This is Grant Gilmore's website. This is his uh, portfolio. So I want to talk about his portfolio first, and then we'll jump back, and we'll talk about one of the specific images in this. So in this, we have seniors, portraits, couples, and wedding. And I haven't seen this at all. One of the things I wanna, I'm looking for in a, a portfolio is something that has a single mind. In other words, I'm a wedding photographer and that's what I do. Or I'm a portrait photographer and that's what I do. Uh, on this website, I think he's okay because he's a portrait photographer. He does weddings, couples, portraits, and seniors. All those to me fit under the same umbrella of a portraiture. Now when I hop in here, one of the things, I did peek at this a little bit earlier. We have all these seniors, but really we only have one senior. So the very first advice I would have to Grant is uh, take this gallery down until you have a few more seniors. Um, so you have at least two or three to show people so they can look in here and see exactly what, what they're working with. And then we have uh, here, it looks like this is not a portfolio, but it looks like a client um, draft so that the client can come in here and just look at all the different photos that were taken. If this is supposed to be a portfolio, of senior portraits, this is not very well done. This is something that you should not do. So this looks like every acceptable portrait from the entire session, and potential clients don't wanna see this. Really what you need to do is choose one or maybe two from the session and post those, and that's it. And then for the client, make a separate website uh, or a separate login where they can go and review their own uh, portrait session. So I would. I would change this. this. There's too much of this person here um, on here. So number one, I'd take the seniors down until you have multiple seniors. And then when you put the seniors up, only choose one or two from each of those. We're gonna go in here and look at portraits. And so it looks like how this is working now that I'm into the website is this is showing like Phoebe here. I'm gonna go in, I'm expecting to see a bunch of Phoebe's stuff. And it looks like we have more and more of Phoebe. And we do, we have tons of Phoebe. And you can buy Phoebe, it looks like, uh, buy portraits of Phoebe. So I'm, I'm not sure now 
about this whole website. So in my mind, this website needs some, some focus because I'm not sure if this is a website that's helping people understand that they can hire Grant or if this is a website that Grant is using to sell his portraits or both. And I think it doesn't do either very well. Uh, I think it's better at, at selling portraits to, uh, to clients than it is to getting new clients. And so I think that that needs some help. If I go into RSVP and some pricing, um, so Grant looks like you're pretty young. Um, so I would, uh, you know, update your website a little bit, um, focus it on either getting new clients and then having a separate gallery for people to buy stuff or just make it all the, the, the uh, portraits that you've done. And that will really be cool. The other thing, you're on AOL. That's awesome for the 90s. So that's weird to see an AOL thing, so I'm just picking on you, but that's a little bit MySpace. Get a Google account or an actual uh, domain name. So my suggestion for anybody that's a professional photographer is get your own domain name. They're very inexpensive, and uh, they're, they're really easy to work with. And SmugMug, this is a SmugMug account. SmugMug can definitely uh, use a custom domain name. If you don't know how to do that, then ask them, and they'll, they'll help you out. Okay, so let me see about me. If there is uh, your photographer, that's great where are where do you live so we don't have any information about where you are um exo life i'm not sure what that is so this is your first personal photo blog take that away we don't need that um and then all this extended stuff i don't even know what that is either so this this whole uh site it just needs a little bit of tightening to focus it so it's more about uh the photos that you've taken okay so enough on this i think uh the point is it needs a makeover also this background is to me um, could be cool, but to me, it's a little bit distracting, but that's totally a, a taste, totally a preference of your own. Okay. So, uh, so people in the chat room are saying, what is an AOL? It's hilarious. They were, they used to, so, yeah, so nobody can hear Matt right now. So he's yelling at me. And so, all right, what do you say? Okay, so the other photo here, not that one, Phoebe, this one here. Yeah, so this, this uh, portrait right here, there are a couple of things that I, I agree with. Number one, it's, it is out of focus. It's got really shallow depth of field. And so you can see on the, the uh, buttons right here that that is clearly in focus, but her face is out of focus. So it looks like that probably what happened was the focus was set and either the photographer moved just slightly, we're talking about an inch or so, or uh, Phoebe moved just a little bit and that threw everything out of focus on her eyes and that's really what counts. So that's one uh, critique I have. The second is her uh, color is off. So she is really sort of greenish yellow. And so people's skin color um, isn't like this. And so that, that sort of bothers me. And so uh, I'd love to see the, the color corrected. It looks like it needs a little bit more blue in this to look a little bit more realistic. Other than that, I think it's a fine composition. The cropping is correct. It's right above the knees. Um, you know, it's a nice vertical portrait. That looks good. We have leading lines that lead us into the photo. Uh, and so that's nice. We've got nice shallow depth of field, nice bokeh on the background. We don't have a lot of sky in here to distract us. We've got a nice solid background that's, that's pleasing. So I think it's just the color that needs to be fixed on this. And then also the focus needs a little bit of help. Um, and that's something you can't really do in post. It's something that has to be done correctly in camera. And so that's, that's my thought on that. Okay. So yeah, for those of you who are wondering, AOL used to be a company that would send out to uh, coasters so you could put them on your coffee table and uh, make sure you didn't damage your coffee table. They also, those coasters, you could put them in your computer. Sometimes people did that to get online, but usually they were just, you know, used as coasters and things like that. It was really cool. Um, all right. So one person said that a black and white of that shot we just did of Phoebe would look much better. And I think that's true, um, but it's still the focus needs to be adjusted. Okay, so this one here is a, a shot from T-Day, TD Photography. TD Photography, yes. Um, and this was evidently published in Vogue, Italy. Maybe, I don't know. A lot of people say that. But um, this shot to me is it's interesting. I think it's really interesting. Uh, first of all, let me talk about what I don't like. And you guys can chime in. What I don't like is this twig right here. It looks like it's about to go up her nose. I don't like that. Um, so I would have, if I was there, I would have taken my finger and snapped this little twig off because I think it gives her a weird mustachey looking thing. And then also on her eye right here. So this twig right here is a little distracting to me. 
I love the styling. I love her eyes. I love the just sort of the soft tones. I like how she is blending into this this natural thing. I'm guessing this is part of a, a bigger fashion story because usually you don't have people just sort of smooshed into the, the plants like this. Um, but I'd love to see this in context. Uh, other than that, I think, you know, this is also one of those that's been uh, highly retouched and the skin tones don't look normal, but they look great to me. So it's very, very pure and white um, and it looks really cool. Um, but yeah, the twig mustache, a lot of people online are, are saying, oh, the twig mustache is, is killing us. Um, and then, oh, I guess Vogue Italia is a user submitted website. So I'm thinking Italian Vogue, which is very, very difficult to be published in. So that makes more sense that this was a different Vogue than I'm thinking of. Okay. Well, I need to catch up on all questions and stuff. One of the things I want to make sure that you uh, are aware of is I do all kinds of live uh, workshops and uh, we do live workshops about all kinds of things. And uh, one of the things that we do a lot is uh, how to use speed lights in the studio or using studio uh, lighting, um, Lightroom, Photoshop, things like that. And they're all uh, here at Mark Wallace Live. And you can see, you can click on the workshop catalog to see those. And one of them I wanted to show you today is uh, the one we did uh, a couple months ago about working with speed lights in the studio. So we're going to play that for you really quickly. And I'm going to catch up on some of the, uh, the interaction we have online. And then we'll be right back. Today is all about speed lights in the studio. And so speed lights, if you're not familiar with them, are these little flashes that go on top of a camera. The principles that we talked about today apply to all uh, different kinds of speed lights. We're gonna try to keep it broad in general and so that no matter what camera you own, uh, you can put these into practice. One of the, the joys of working with speed lights is they're tiny and they're very lightweight and you can use them uh, on location. But over the years, they've become more and more powerful and so now you can use them in a studio similarly to a, a studio strobe. And so if you're brand new to shooting in a studio and you want to just dive in and you don't want to worry about using a light meter and you want to be able to do some of the things we do today, this is the quick start way to do it. We're going to start throwing umbrellas and soft boxes and grids and we're going to start making portraits and building on exposure and flash exposure compensation and remote triggering and that kind of stuff. And if none of that stuff makes sense to you, then this workshop is perfect for you because we're going to try to keep this at a higher level. All right, well, um, that is uh, one of the workshops that we have. Remember, we have a bunch of those on Mark Wallace Live. So, so a couple of people are talking in the, uh, in the chat window. I'm headed to India. Somebody asked me, um, they know it's a personal trip to India, but can I have one workshop in India? And unfortunately, no, I'm, I'm not going to be doing any workshops in India. In fact, I'm hiding out. I'm not really telling anybody where in India I'm going um, because it's, I need some recharge time. And so I'm not gonna be hanging out with anybody or doing any of that. Maybe the next time I'm there, I will do that, but this time it's more of a personal journey. So uh, there won't be a workshop in India um, this time around, but maybe later uh, next year or uh, who knows. So uh, it's very expensive to zip over there. So I'm not gonna be doing that. Okay. Um, so uh, let's see, somebody said, hey, I posted some stuff, a link to your 500 pics portfolio, but I'm confused why only images are being hosted on Facebook, so they don't want to be reviewed. So if you posted a link on Facebook, um, we are going to open some of those links and look at some things from, like we just saw some stuff from Smug Mug, and if we have some from 500 pics or other websites, we will definitely be looking at those. So it's just the link needs to be posted on Facebook so others can look at that, and it's really be, going to be cool. All right, um, and Bev Compton is saying, look at my stuff, Bev Compton Photography, I see that. Hey, Bev, um, she's really cool. <laughs> We've met a few times. All right, um, okay, so uh, I wanna show you something else. I promised I was gonna show you this earlier, and that is, let's take a really quick look at Squarespace because um, this episode is brought to us by Squarespace, and Squarespace, if you can see it here, this is a platform, it's an all-in-one platform, and it really makes it fast and easy for you to create your own professional website or an online portfolio. And uh, you can actually get a free trial, and for your free trial and 10% off your first purchase, uh, go to squarespace.com and then use the offer code SNAPFACTORY. So I wanna walk through uh, Squarespace really quickly and show you some things that are really, really cool that I like about this. And I really don't talk about them um, except that I, I love their service and I will show you why. So one of the things that's really awesome, if you're not a designer, there are a, uh, just a ton of templates here for every type of business. And so you can go in here and choose the one you like. And once you do that, you start your free trial. You don't have to have a credit card, it's actually free. Um, just go in there and start that. 
And then also you can get your own domain. And so, um, you know, you can have bevcompton.com or whatever your website is, and Squarespace is going to support that. So what I want to do here, instead of just talking about it, I want to show you some things. So I'm going to actually log in, and I have a Squarespace account. So I'll do that, logging in. And I want to go to a site that I'm sort of putting together, and I want to show you some things that really stand out to me. Um, one is that Squarespace, they're really, they're always improving their platform with a bunch of new features and new designs and uh, better support. And so it's always evolving with new stuff. And one of the things that I really liked is the ease of use. So on the left-hand side, there's all kinds of things. You can just create your pages. You have um, analytics, so you can look in here and see what people are looking at. But one of the things that's really cool is you can just set your site up to do whatever you want it to do. So you can connect things like uh, Twitter and Facebook and um, uh, SmugMug and all those different accounts here. In fact, if I connect on this, uh, I've got my Twitter account, my Facebook account, my YouTube account connected. I could connect uh, Foursquare, Instagram, Flickr, Tumblr, Google, uh, Dropbox, Vimeo, LinkedIn, Dribbble, Pinterest, SmugMug, 500 Picks, email, all that stuff. So you can uh, integrate all of that with your account. And the other thing is if you have a WordPress site or something you've been working on a while, well, you can import your site, and so you don't have to start from scratch. And so you can see here that you can import V5, WordPress, Tumblr, Big Cartel. If you have a Shopify account, Blogger, uh, you can do all of that stuff right here. And so uh, if you have something that's existing, you're not really satisfied with it, but you don't want to start from scratch, you don't have to. But let's say you are starting from scratch. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to build a page. So I'm in the, the back end here of my little website, and I want to just add a page. So I'm going to click Add Page. And what this allows me to do is choose a page or a product or a folder, all these different things. And so, oh, by the way, products, if you want to sell your products, like your images, if you want to sell classes, if you want to sell um, services, you can do all of that. And so there's a full uh, shopping cart functionality that's built in. You don't have to know any code or anything. It's, it's there. But I want to just create a page really fast just to show you how easy this is. And you don't have to know any code. You don't have to know anything about building a website. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to call this... Um, demo gallery and I will save that and now in the demo gallery if I want to type something it just says click here to begin typing and I'll click here to begin typing and I'm gonna say I'm typing something this is cool and so now let's say we want to add a gallery to this well we add galleries in different chunks of content by clicking this little add block and blocks are chunks of content that you can put on your site so I'll add a block and I can add text or markdown or quote um, all kinds of things. If you don't know what that is, you don't need to. But I want to put a gallery in here. So I'm going to click on gallery. And now all I have to do is drag and drop my files into this. So I'm going to go over here to, in fact, I'm going to make this from full screen a little bit smaller so I can drag and drop. So I'm going to go into my, uh, I've got a little folder open here called Studio Lighting Essentials. And it's got some pictures from my Studio Lighting Essentials uh, workshop. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add, let's like say, four of these. I just drag and drop them. That's it. So when I drag and drop, they're automatically uploaded. I can say save. I can go in here and I can add, let's say, a, um, oh, let's put in here an external link. And I'll say buy my DVD. And I'll put in studiolightingessentials.com. And I'll tell it to open in a new window. And now there's a link there. Then I'll set save and publish. Now watch this. When I view this page, here it is. I'm typing something cool. This is cool. Here's my little gallery. But watch, there's something I don't like about this. Mm, there's no thumbnails. I can't, there's really no navigation that's really easy to see. Well, all I have to do is click this little edit content button right here. Um, I can check that or I can manage the page. And that's really what I want to do is manage the page. When I click on this little gallery, when I do that, I have all my gallery options. And so I can go into design. I can say, don't auto crop this. Show some thumbnails. Show the title and description. Uh, auto play. Make it start right after that. Save. And now I just change the entire way that this looks. So now I have my thumbnails. I got that working. And that's pretty much how all of um, Squarespace works. You don't have to know how to build a website. All you have to know is how to type or use a word processor and it allows you to do that. So it's very easy to use. By the way, there's 24-7 support. So if I go to squarespace.com 
let's say I just don't know Squarespace. I don't know, um, whoops, Squarespace. I don't know how to do anything. Well, I can go to the menu and there's help and support right here. That will open up to help.squarespace.com. There's this entire help center. And if I want to live chat, I can click here and there's actually somebody that I can chat with um, 24 seven and uh, we could get that person online right now. And it also is it's constantly evolving, which is really, really nice. So um, check it out. Um, Squarespace is the, the partner that's helping us make these live portfolio reviews happen. And so check it out. It's no credit card re required. You can start building your website today. And when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use the offer code SNAPFACTORY and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. And you'll also show your support for the live portfolio reviews and Mark Wallace Live. So go ahead and do that. And we hope you do that so that we can keep doing these for free. Okay, well, let's keep going. I want to keep checking out uh, some more of these uh, photos and giving more insight here. We've got about a half an hour left, so this is really cool. Um, so um, let me look. We have uh, Squarespace is the bomb.com. People are saying, so there's a lot of people that use Squarespace that are chatting with us here, and, uh, and it's, it actually is. One person says, how many photos am I going to review? As many as I possibly can, so let's get to it. All right, so this one here is Igor Soldo's photo, Igor Soldo's. And this is a shot of uh, uh, a street shot in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, so this, to me, is a, it's an all okay shot. This doesn't call out to me in any way that, uh, you know, that, that resonates with my soul. And the reason that it doesn't is there's really not a lot of storytelling involved in this. So I'm not from Bosnia. I don't know really what the context of this is. I don't know what this uh, little scooter is. I don't know if it's an awesome scooter or a collector's item. I don't know who this person is, if he's famous, if he's just a guy on the street. And so to me, this, you know, compositionally, it's fine, but it doesn't really compel me in any way. And so technically, it's a, it's a great shot. It's got great exposure. The light is just fine. The colors are great. It's sharp. It's in focus, all of those things. But from a storytelling perspective, I'm, I don't really have much of a reason to look at this photo other than there's a guy on a moped. And so what I'm looking for is something that's more compelling, something that really uh, makes me question what's happening in this photo or explains what's happening in this photo. So, you know, it'd be better maybe if he was loaded up with uh, a bunch of groceries or if he was outside a, a Harley Davidson dealer or if, uh, you know, there was somebody with him or some, some kind of context. And so that's what I'm looking for that's not in this image. Um, the other thing is we have converging lines. So just how his head hits this uh, line right here, that's a really nitpicky kind of thing, but it would be so much nicer if, if the photographer moves left this way, goes left, then what will happen is that will fix that line. And so his head won't be converged against that. And so for me, this is a, a fine photo technically, but aesthetically it leaves a little bit to be desired. So, um, that's, that's what I uh, take away from this photo. So keep shooting. Um, it's, it's technically great. It just doesn't have much to say in the, in the way, to me anyway, in the way of um, a compelling story. Okay. Um, so, and people are, are, are agreeing with that. They're saying it's a nice shot, but they wouldn't hang it on their wall. Um, it's an awesome scooter. And by the way, I rode a moped for years. That's how I learned to ride um, uh, motorcycles. I ride motorcycles all the time right now. Um, so anyway... And uh, it, it, this is shot midday, it looks like, but since it's, uh, it looks like he's got some shadow here on the face, which makes it a little bit more pleasing. So not bad. It just doesn't have that compelling, I want to see this photo kind of thing. All right. So this is another shot that was uh, submitted. This is from lightshadefx.com. And let's talk about this photo. So this is obviously a very attractive woman sitting somewhere. And so um, the, the things that draw me into this photo that make me like it, um, one, very attractive woman. You can't go wrong with that, right? So very attractive girl. But beyond that, if we can look beyond that, there's this really good looking girl. We can see that her uh, hair has a lot of detail in the hair. So that's good. A lot of times when we have someone with a really dark black or brunette hair, uh, what happens is the contrast gets to be so high that you can't see any details in the shadows and so that was avoided in this uh, instance. And so that's really well done. I like that. Um, the other thing that I think is, is well done are the fine details, the, 
you know, the chain on the collar, the ring, the fan. You can tell that she had her fingernails done. So there's some details um, that were paid to the styling, which I really like. There are a couple things I don't like, though. And one is because of the way her knee is in this dress, it looks weird. So I'm not quite sure. I mean, I know that her leg is, is bent right here and it's coming down, but the other leg looks a little bit weird. So I'm not really quite sure what's happening under here. So it looks like maybe her legs are broken or something. Again, that's really nitpicky, but that's something that as soon as I noticed it, I thought, huh, that's just really weird. The other thing that is uh, a negative to this image is we have what's called a false horizon, and that's this really strong horizontal line from the fence. And normally it's not a bad thing, but in this case, it just seems odd to me that we have the majority of the image that has this really strong texture, and then all of a sudden we don't. And so that could be avoided by the, the photographer. If you just stand up a little bit, then that changes the perspective of this. So I was curious because uh, this girl looks like she's photoshopped a little bit because she's so pretty. She's got these really, really um, amazing eyelashes. And so like what happened? But because this is a, uh, an actual website, I am clicked on it. And guess what? Ah, there's even more work. And in here, there's more work from the same, uh, the same model. So I was looking and I think that actually of the photos that we saw, this one's a little bit better. And I also saw something else when I did that. And that is, see how lo slow that photo uh, loaded in? The reason it loaded in so slow is because these files aren't resized for the web. They're still really, really big. And so you need to do a better job with compressing the files. And uh, that will help you a lot because anytime I go to a new picture, it's the same thing. It just takes forever for the picture to load. And we're on really high speed internet. And so um, I know that if you uh, had AOL or dial up, this would take forever. But overall, I think these are, are done um, pretty well. I, I really like these shots. Uh, one of the things that I would suggest though is her eyelashes are a little clumpy. So they look like starfish. And so I need to either help this girl out, understand how to do her her eyelashes or get a stylist to come in and separate those because they're clumped up and that doesn't look well for her even though she's very attractive that that's some styling that needs to happen um, and in this I think overall you've got some really good shots this looks a little underexposed for my taste um, so you need to maybe bump up the exposure just a little bit in post-production if you shot raw but I like the composition I like the green I like the texture um, I like what you've done with this and overall I think these portraits are, are well done okay um, let me see. Uh, let's see. This one is good. Um, anyone else watch countless hours of Mark on Lynda.com? I hope not because I've never been on Lynda.com. So if you're watching Mark on Lynda, I don't know what you're seeing. Um, only on YouTube and on Creative Live. Maybe Creative Live is what you're thinking of. All right. Um, Steve said something uh, mean about this girl. I'm not going to repeat, but um, I, can, I can see it, Steve. I won't say it, but it's really cool. Um, Okay, so let's go on to our next uh, uh, next shot. This in here is from Damon Bilgers, I guess. Damon Bilger. And uh, this is a shot of a girl sitting in, on a sidewalk. And when I look at this, uh, evidently she this is a, a wedding dress, I think, or a prom dress. I'm not so sure. And so uh, at first blush, when I look at this, I think, eh, this is an okay portrait. It's, it's okay. But when I look at it, and if I really want to be uh, critical, there's some things that I would definitely want to change in this portrait. And again, portraits are shot for people, and people that buy those portraits are the ultimate judge of if the portrait is good or not, not Mark Wallace. So take what I have to say with a grain of salt. But um, one of the things I would love to see happen, I like that the sky is totally blown out. And so technically that's a, a no-no, but artistically it works. And so rules are made to be broken. And I think that it works with the sky totally blown out. And I think it works because we have nice shallow depth of field. Um, we have these leading lines that work really well. And we probably have a nasty background because you have this really structurally ugly bridge back here. This looks like somewhere in tri-state area. I don't know where it is. But um, so uh, technically, even though it's a mis not a mistake, but a, uh, something that you're advised not to do, I think it really works to, to overexpose this. The other thing though that's happening is because this color temperature of this sky is probably different than the shade, it's throwing a color cast on the model. And so she looks orange. So that's the very, very first thing that I noticed is she looks sort of orangey 
And so um, maybe that was on purpose. So it looks sort of the, um, that old timey kind of feel. Um, but for my taste, I would, I'd prefer a little bit of those yellows to be taken out of um, the model. And I don't know if this is a white dress or not, but it's, um, it's not white anymore. It's got a color cast. So that's one thing that, that uh, sort of came out to me immediately. The other thing is we've got this sort of foreground and I would crop that just a little bit because we've got this sort of these bricks that are a little bit extending a little bit too far. So I'd crop that in a little bit and we could lose a little bit of this. So there's room to crop and get this a little bit tighter. And I think that would make it a little bit, uh, a little bit nicer portrait. So those two things, the cropping, I think needs a little bit of help. The color needs a little bit of help. Um, other than that, I think it's a, it's a, a well done portrait. Um, so yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the other thing that people are mentioning is this big green, this curve, this branch right here. And so sometimes that works, but I think that's something that you should have snapped off and not had in the photo because it, it looks, looks a little strange to me. Um, you could probably clean that up with, um, the healing brush in Photoshop and, and get most of that out, or at least a big chunk of it. And I think the context aware stuff in Photoshop CC and CS6 would fix that. And oh, by the way, look at that. There's an ad for that right there. Okay. Um, let me keep going. So blown out, by the way, uh, sometimes happens, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, having blown out skies. So in that instance, I don't think it is. All right, this is a shot um, of uh, Lania Sweet, Day of the Dead, El Muerte. So this is definitely a, a shot that's highly stylized for a very specific kind of, of shoot. Now, um, Skulls and masks and dead stuff is not my thing. I'm sort of the life-affirming, nonviolent kind of dude that doesn't like Halloween much. But uh, if you're going to do it, do it. And I think that this is done um, pretty well. And let me tell you why. So first of all, I like the composition. So we have this portrait. It's not too tight of a portrait. We do get to see that, you know, she's got these tattoos down here, which are really cool. So we've got sort of the, uh, the angel devil there. We can see a, a little bit about this person's character. We've got a bunch of earrings there, a lot of piercings. And then we've got sort of this edgy, um, you know, Day of the Dead makeup, which is done pretty well. Um, I'm not an expert on Day of the Dead makeup, but I've seen a little bit here in Phoenix. Um, there is, uh, there's a contingent of Day of the Dead people. And I think that uh, this, is, this is done pretty well. But as far as the portrait is concerned, a few things. We have really nice shallow depth of field. And to pull that off, two things have to happen. We have to make sure that the eyes are in focus. And both of them are. So we don't have a portrait that's so shallow that we lose all of her face. But it's shallow enough to make sure that we uh, pay attention to what's important. And that is this person's face. Um, and now there's a truck behind us. So if you hear that, sorry about that. Um, the other thing that's going on here that I think is really great is the, uh, this tree here that sort of anchors her in this forest. And then also we have a really nice high contrast image that's really nice and sharp. And so this just works well for me, um, which is, is great. So somebody here is, is saying, so this is Drew saying there's a lot of images with blurred objects in the foregrounds. Um, and those blurred objects are actually not blurred. They're out of focus objects. So it's really important that you... Uh, you uh, understand the difference between something that's out of focus and something that's blurred. Because something that's out of focus happens with the lens and the aperture and something that's blurred happens with the shutter and movement. And so if you confuse those, you will never be able to figure out how to either create them or correct them. So these are out of focus, uh, used with a wide open aperture, usually a longer lens um, and a, uh, yeah, those two things and a little bit close to the subject. And the reason that a lot of photographers put stuff in the foreground that's out of focus is it helps build some foreground interest and it also builds context. And it uh, also can sort of be something that's a little bit mysterious. And I think that's done really well as well. All right. Yeah. So people are hearing all kinds of craziness. The guys that dump the, dar the garbage, the big uh, bins out here, they only wait until we're live and then they come and they drive the big trucks. So we're sorry about that. We have no control over that because we're sort of in a place that's not too in, um, too, uh, ah, finally they're gone. All right, let's keep going. So Drew, that's all right. We can hear it too. All right, let's take a look at this. This is uh, uh, La Memorie's photographs. So uh, this is a photogra uh, photojournalistic walk in Sarajevo. 
I want to go to Sarajevo. Um, so this is supposed to be something that's a photojournalistic walk, and I think that's a, um, a bad translation, because if it was photojournalistic, it would be a newsworthy thing. And so maybe this is a newsworthy thing. I just don't know what newsworthy thing happened here. I don't know if there was something that happened during the war or during the Olympics or what. Um, so maybe there's something newsworthy that happened here. There's no people really in the shot except for way, way back in the back. So I'm not so sure this is photojournalistic um, except for to document here's the space and time for posterity's sake. So I think maybe this is just a, a uh, what we call here um, it's a street photography. So documenting uh, people in places that are um, around us. And so if we look at it from that perspective, there are a few things that are going on for this. We do have these uh, lines that are leading us into the photo. And so that's good. We've got this really strong one point perspective here. We have really uh, nice contrast. I wish the, the blacks in this image were a little bit darker, but that might be my monitor. Um, but it looks like this could use a little bit of contrast. Other than that, um, this photo sort of is the same thing to me as the guy in the moped. It's technically a, a great photo. It follows all the rules of composition, but there's really no uh, intrinsic value to it. I'm not so sure what makes this photo um, appealing to me other than, okay, it's a car on a street and it's contrasty. So to me, this is a, a great shot from a technical perspective. The exposure is great, uh, all those things, but there's no, um, there's nothing that draws me in to make me want to look and see what's happening. It just looks like a street with some buildings. So um, that's it. All right, and I don't know if this is a BMW or not. It looks like a, looks like a Fiat, I don't know, something. Okay, so there's that. All right, let's go to our next photo. I sound like the fro there for a second, photo. This is a, a shot, uh, again, from the same person. And, it, and I wanted to show both of these because to me, they, they have the same type of feel to them. So this is, a bridge and a walkway. And so um, technically, it follows all the rules. It's got some framing with these branches. It has these leading lines that lead us into the, uh, into the image. We've got this that leads us into the image. The colors are great, it's in focus, all of those things. But it doesn't have that story that, lends, that, that leads me into this, um, that makes me say, oh, I wanna know what's happening in that picture. So I think now the, the thing to, to focus on is your technical abilities are great. Now let's try to push yourself to start looking for photos that tell a story in some way. Maybe there's somebody playing, somebody uh, playing an instrument, kids playing. Maybe there's a car that's unusual. There's something in that scene that is um, interesting besides the scene itself. And I think that's the assignment for um, la memory photographie. And that's the worst accent I've ever had. Um, but anyway, that's, that's my opinion there. Okay, so Eddie the Teddy says, this is better because there's no people. And uh, Jay's like, yeah, this is working with lines. And so yeah, if, uh, if you're working with line and you're working with uh, the technical things that, that, that uh, lend themselves to better photography, then this is great. People are saying the light is good. I agree. Um, all of those things, this is technically a good photo, but um, there is no interest to me other than it's uh, um, technically good. Also, yeah, this bridge is cutting, it's sort of cutting that photo in half. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. I think it's a good photo that, that will lead you to better things in the future. All right, well, we wanna talk about something else. We mentioned again um, that we have um, uh, workshops that are available. And Matt, I think I got the order um, backwards. So I want to tell you about one that we did, and that was um, people ask me all the time about on location light and lighting. It's a question I get all the time. If I'm shooting a person on location, how do I do that? Well, I actually taught a workshop called on location light and lighting right here on Mark Wallace Live. I want to show you that to you really fast. I'm going to catch up on some of these people that are asking questions, and then we're going to keep going. We've got about 10 or 15 minutes left of the review, and then we'll be done. So take a look at this. This is on location light and lighting. Uh, welcome to another Mark Wallace Live. We are now on location and we're going to be uh, talking about balancing ambient light with speed lights and strobes and all kinds of stuff. We have this beautiful outdoor 
uh, patio and pool. Um, we're going to start by understanding the difference between ambient light and light that comes from your flash. There are two different exposures that we're going to be working with and that means we have to understand sync speed so I'll introduce sync speed to you. We're going to talk about what high speed sync is or FP sync if you're a Nikon owner. We're going to uh, first start with speed lights and reflectors. So we're going to shoot with speed lights and reflectors in the shade and we're going to go out and try to do that in a really harsh light. light. Then we're going to add in some different lights. We're actually going to start using some studio strobes and then I'll show you how to use an external light meter and uh, we're going to be shooting some editorial shots of Jay. We're going to be doing some portraits and then we're going to finally get over to our swimming pool and we're going to end the day by shooting some bikini shots and we're going to be doing that with a Profoto ring flash as well as speed lights and some other things. So it's going to be really a lot of fun. All right, well, let's take another look. We have a set here that really stood out to me, and this is a set on Flickr, and I want to show you this uh, person's um, post on Facebook. So uh, Matt will just show this really fast. This is uh, a guy named Muhammad Abdel Hadi Muhammad. I think that's how you say his name. Um, but uh, he, he just posted this, um, this link here, Hotels and Resorts, on his Flickr uh, channel. So I clicked on that, and I instantly recognized, aha, this is the guy that takes pictures of hotels that makes me want to go and stay there all the time. And so, um, first of all, uh, these are immaculate photos. So I, I was lost. I actually looked at this last night a little bit and thought, wow, these are so well done. Why are they so well done? Well, number one, they really evoke a sense of space. And so they let you know what you're getting into when you go to uh, this hotel. So there's the grand piano, there's the balconies and the stairways, the artwork, all that, that kind of stuff. Um, the lighting is done um, not perfectly. So I, I know a lot of interior, um, interior photographers, architectural photographers, that would cringe a little bit at this photo right here because the color temperature of these incandescent lights doesn't match the color temperature of the ambient light. So normally you would gel all of these things or gel all the, the lights to match that stuff. But if you don't have thousands of dollars in a crew and a lot of time and the ability to shut down a hotel, you just sort of have to go with it. And I think that's what's happened in this instant. And so uh, in this photo, I just, I love these photos. There are some small details that um, I would change if I was going to be really technical about it. Uh, number one, I would take this water bottle and these little things that are on the tables. I would get rid of those things because those are going to be changing um, pretty regularly and they're sort of, you know, they're temporary things. So take those out, take the photo and put them back. Um, other than that, when I look at these, and I'll see if I can go back one. I don't like how Flickr makes you sort of look back. The other thing that I noticed in a lot of these is we had, uh, in this instance, uh, this, is, this is posed, this is staged to look uh, like somebody is here having a nice chilled beverage and having their uh, Blackberry that's going to be sitting there and not being read. Um, but in other words, they're going to be hanging out at the pool. I think this would be a little bit better if we had people at the pool because it looks a little bit lonely. And so this person who's here, looks hopefully it looks like a guy with those uh, sunglasses. This is a lonely guy with nobody around him. So, um, you know, some people at the pool would be a little bit better in my opinion. But as far as the photo is concerned, I think it's pretty well done. Uh, also, the color composition works for me. So we have uh, a lot of split complementaries. So we have... Uh, this red warm here, we've got green, we have blue, so those are basically the primaries, um, a nice triad of colors there. Um, as we go through, we are seeing this one. You can just see photo after photo, these are the details. So if you're at a nice hotel, you can see that somebody's going to be playing the piano. Again, if I'm going to be really picky, this person should have gotten their fingernails fixed. So she's got her nail polish is being chipped off. So it's like almost high-end perfect, but it's not quite there yet. These little details need to be fixed. Um, the little placeholders, the chipped fingernails, the people in the background. Um, but still, I want to go to all these hotels. This one looks pretty cool. I wish these umbrellas were opened. So just really nitpicky things. But other than that, these are done really well. And I think any travel site or hotel would be proud to put these on their website. And I think travelers would look at these and say, yeah, that's what I'm going to get when I get there. Sign me up. Um, so that's that's how that that works as far as these. Okay, we're almost out of time, but I have a couple more uh, portfolios I want to talk to you. So this one right here is Drew Forsyth's. I think Drew might even be in here. Didn't he say something? Yeah, Drew F. He's in the chat room. So Drew, we're going to look at your uh, portfolio. 
And uh, one of the things I look for when I'm looking at a portfolio, again, is, is it single-minded? Does it tell a client what kind of photographer that you are? So right off the bat, um, we have the option to meet Drew. So this is Drew right here. As, hey, my name is Drew. I'm a freelance photographer based in Manchester, UK. So I guess there's a football team there or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, so uh, he captures moments. And so it looks like what I read into this is you do pretty much anything. As long as something happens, uh, you're going to be capturing it. And so, um, you know, this is good to talk about. Uh, I think this is good that Drew is setting people up to say, hey, you know what? I shoot a wide range of product, uh, projects and I'm able to do that. Now, very few people can actually say that and show it. So let's see if Drew can actually show it on his website because he does have a lot of stuff. He's got portraits and headshots and dance and documentary and weddings and events. And so let's just check it out. So we're gonna check first at dance. And I, make, I have high hopes uh, for this website because Drew has sort of set the bar pretty high with his about me page. And we need to see if he can actually live up to those expectations. So we're gonna take a look at some of these photos right here. So this is definitely a dance uh, well-lit dude with tires. I'm not so sure. Yeah, let's just go to the next one. So we have this shot here. These are great shots, uh, these dancers. I'm not so sure what the tires are about. Maybe this is a, um, you know, uh, I don't know, some kind of play or something that's happening here. But these are well-executed shots. And if I looked at this and I was a dancer or if I worked at a concert hall or something and I wanted some shots of dancers or performers, I think I'd say, yeah, Drew's the guy to call. And so I think these are, are great, Drew. Um, by the way, I did work at a concert hall for a few years, a lot of years actually. And so this is the kind of stuff that we saw all the time. I love this shot. This is great. We have just the details of the you know, ballerina slippers on the cobblestones. Who can do that? That's insane. Um, that's, that's a great shot. I love the lighting. I love the style of lighting that you have here with the, the two side lights. It looks a little bit like Chase Jarvis from uh, the early 2000s with the big pancake light to the side. So these are well executed. Um, this one I'm not such a big fan of because it looks like a car just hit her in the garage and now she's flying across. That's what I think. It looks like she just got smacked by a car and the car made a getaway. Shoom. But um, other than that, I think most of them are good. That, that one there I think I'd take out because it's, it's cool. And man, the tone. Okay, so dance, yeah, you got dance down. I'm going to give you that. Um, and then we're going to go here to portraits. We're going to see if you get two or three of these right. So I'm going to do uh, headshots. These are great. So again, these are really simple, clean headshots. And a headshot is exactly what it sh This is what a headshot should be. It's not a portrait necessarily. It's a tight shot of a person's face. It's a headshot, something that's used in a, a, you know, a portfolio review for a, an actor. Um, it's on their resume, something they'd stick on the wall when they're in a play. So these are well done. They're very neutral. They're very soft, obviously done in the studio. Um, and that carries through even on uh, the shots of the females. This is great. One thing I'd say, Drew, you need to open up these shadows a little bit because they're losing detail of the hair. So we've got this gorgeous girl here, but we've got some problems with her hair. We can't see all the details there. And the same is true here in the hair of this, this person. But I like how these are very consistent with the look, the feel, so it doesn't matter if it's a guy or a girl and what, uh, what's going on. They're all consistent, which is really cool. All right. Um, I'm going to look at one more here just to see. And if this has the quality of work that the other uh, portfolios do, then I think that you're well on your way to becoming a very established photographer if you're not already. So this is supposed to be documentary stuff. So in other words, documenting something that's happening on a location that's newsworthy or something that uh, an, a, a corporation would want to report on. And it looks like this is swell. This is all great stuff. There's some color temperature problems with this picture here. So just use this as your, um, as your neutral target and you can fix the green in their arms. And that would be a really quick, easy fix. So yeah, this is all great stuff. So this is probably one of the very rare portfolios that we've seen on this review that has this sort of shotgun style of, of a portfolio that a person says, hey, I can shoot a wedding as well as I can shoot a concert. We've not really seen that, but I think, uh, Drew, you have proven the point that you can do that. So um, well done. We don't have time to look at all of your portraits 
specifically, but as far as your portfolio goes, I think you've done a good job with demonstrating your abilities as a photographer. I want to know how I can contact you though. I'm going to hit about me and this is great. We have a phone number and we have a web, I mean, a, uh, an email address. We've got all the Twitter and Instagram and Facebook stuff that we need to know. So I could call Drew right now and say, Hey, I need to hire you. And he would answer. And that's what you want. If you're a photographer that's looking for clients, they have to be able to, um, contact you. So great. All right. Um, we have two more really fast that I want to get to before we leave. This one here is nightclub photography. Uh, and this is Mark Umbrella's profile. So I don't know what Mark's real name is, but I don't have time to zip back over to Facebook and see. So I'm not a big nightclub photo guy, but one of the things I do know that if you're a nightclub photographer, like the photographers here that shoot for 944 um, and other magazines, like in Los Angeles and Phoenix and San Francisco and New York, Miami, they want people to come to nightclubs and take pictures so they can be published in magazines that are free. So people will look at those magazines to see if they're in the magazine. That's sort of the name of the game with a lot of the nightclub stuff. And so what we're looking for is, um, is it that type of photography? I'm not sure. Or is this uh, photography for the club itself as an advertising thing? So I'm going to sort of look through here and see. It looks like this is more of an advertisement because the people aren't changing. And if the people aren't changing, then it should be an advertisement. If the people are changing, then I would, I would think that this is more for like one of those local magazines. One of the things I think is done well, by the way, it's always hard to shoot in nightclubs because of the light. The light is always wacky. So you've got to use some kind of fill flash or some kind of um, uh, off-camera flash to help you out of speed light normally. And these look great. I mean, the light looks really good. And so either these were lit uh, when the club was closed or this is just a phenomenal job of, of lighting these um, with a speed light. Or it looks like this is really high ISO. So this is a D6000. It was ISO 400, so um, it's a little grainy for 400 for my taste. So um, get a bit of different camera maybe. I don't know. Um, I do like the, the feel of these. These are very environmental. We see what's going on. We have the club feeling around with the, the lights on everybody's faces. We have these out-of-focus foregrounds. So it really draws attention to the one person. So again, that shallow depth of field that we talked about earlier, somebody asked about, um, you know, why do people put out-of-focus things in the foreground? Well, it really helps us to draw ourselves into this uh, setting. Now, I've noticed that this girl here is in a few of these pictures. So either Mark had a crush on this girl this night or she's the model. So I don't know which one is which, but she obviously likes being in the photos. So I'm hoping that she's the model or maybe she was the person of choice that night. But I think these are, are done really well. Oh, she's the birthday girl, so that's what it is. So we've got a nice story here. We've got, um, you know, things that are well exposed. We've got nice, this is uh, rear curtain sync. This is one of the best things you can do in an event where you let your speed light fire at the end of the frame. So you can see that this was 1 15th of a second exposure. And so if you don't know what rear curtain sync is, learn it. Um, you can search YouTube for Mark Wallace rear curtain sync, and I've got a tutorial on how to do it. But this allows you to blur the background and freeze the foreground all at the same time. And so I think this is a, a job well done. So all of these shots are, are really well done. Kudos. I think this is uh, somebody that's proficient at this type of photography. Okay, well, we are out of time. We have, wait, we have one more shot. I want to get to it. Okay, so this is Dennis Paredes' uh, photo. And I want to make sure we get to this before we close. This is our last photo of the day. And so, Dennis, um, here's what I think of this photo. I think, number one, I, I love how it, it sort of draws me into this scene. The problem with this is, I, at first blush, I look at it and go, wow, that's an awesome photo. Uh, number one, you didn't put the sun right in the middle. That's a beginner's mistake. You used the rule of thirds. You got it off and to the side. Um, you've got this really large foreground interest here of the rocks. That's really cool. And so we've got this strong diagonal line that breaks the sea from the... Uh, the shore. And I like that. Um, the one thing I don't like necessarily is that everything, it's monochromatics. In other words, it's all this yellow color cast. And so I think that might be a little bit much. And so I was looking at it a little bit. And at first I was like, wow, this is really cool. But the more I looked at it, I started to lose interest. Because first of all, there's really not much of interest on these rocks here. 
Um, and so I think if this wasn't so monochromatic, it might seem to be a little bit uh, more interesting to me. I do like that we have this backlight coming in, but again, I think this needs something, maybe a person, um, some animals, something here to lend a little bit more interest to this large chunk of real estate you've given to this photo. And then the background, um, I, I would go back and try this again on a different day because the clouds are not cooperating with you on this night. They're just sort of the clouds, they're not those big um, puffy clouds that we love to see. And so I would go back and return to this and try shooting it again a couple times if, uh, if you live close by because I think this is worth returning to, to see if you can work with this. And a lot of photographers will do that. They'll find a space that works for them, and they'll go back time and time again to try different things. Maybe try putting uh, some people here, try it with, uh, you know, if there's some birds or something that show up. Um, if there's an old car, I don't even know how big this thing is, maybe stick something up there. Or maybe if there's a boat out here, try different backgrounds, try different lighting um, uh, post-production techniques. So it's maybe more blue, more yellow, more red. Uh, maybe do some... Uh, some different processing so the sky is processed one way and the rocks processed another way i think this needs to go a few steps farther than it has right now and so uh, the, my initial uh, first glance was it looks great but as i started looking at it a little bit more i think it needs a little bit more um, love and affection and so return to this spot shoot some more times um, yeah one person said hey why don't you use some flash on the rocks that might be something that could help out um, you might want to do all kinds of things, but it's up to you to try. I think this is, is not there just yet. It's close, but it's not there yet. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Remember, we have, I have posted all of these. Actually, I didn't post them. You posted them on my Facebook page. So if you're not a, f a friend of mine on Facebook, go and check out my Facebook page. This post, I sort of pinned it to the top so you can see all the different um, photos and portfolios that people posted. And uh, I got to as many as I possibly could, but what I would love to have happen is if the community could go and look at everybody else's photos and we could start having a discussion and you could help other people out because my opinion is not really the one that matters most. Um, so we could have different opinions about different things. So don't just post something and say, look at me. Uh, if you've posted something, go in and, and start looking at other people's work as well. We are going to be doing two more of these in December, and uh, we're going to be focused on specific types of photography. And so on my Facebook page, again, we will be announcing those about um, four or five days before we go live. And so we're going to give you an assignment. We're going to say shoot a portrait with shallow depth of field or a landscape with XYZ something so that we can be even more focused with our uh, photo reviews. And we're going to be moving more towards photo reviews and less with portfolio reviews as we go forward because I think most people are saying, hey, I just want help with my pictures, not necessarily my website uh, overall at this point. And speaking of websites, we have to say thanks to Squarespace because Squarespace made it possible for us to bring this to you today. And we want to remind you how awesome they are by playing you this right now. And this will be our goodbye. So join us again next time. And thanks again to Squarespace. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, Go to squarespace.com and use offer code SNAPFACTORY.